And we are excited to be joined by our pal Jermaine Illuminor. And Jermaine, uh, when this comes out, we will have just wrapped up mandatory mini camp. So for the average fan, right, for the casual fan who isn't in the depths that you guys are, what is just the biggest difference between, logistically speaking, between an OTA and what you guys did over the past three days? Um, I would say the only difference is you have a little bit more meeting time in the afternoon to watch the film from the practice earlier in the day. With OTAs, you kind of just have to come in there. You have a little meeting in the morning, you practice, and you go home. You know, So we have time to go over the film more in depth and see things that we can work on better the next day instead of having to come in and you know, just learn on the fly. Gives you a little bit more meeting time, but that's really the only difference. You know, and for the linemen too, and we, we talk about for both you guys on the offensive side and the defensive side of things, you know, it's kind of hard to really replicate what you guys do without pads, you know, even really until we get to camp. So like, when you look at, at your guys' group as a collective, like what did you guys want to take out of the out of these three days? Um, I would say that OTAs and minicamp for an offensive lineman is more mental than it is physical. Mm-hmm. Now certain plays on the D-line or you know, they bring that intensity, so you have to, you know, bring that same intensity or you're going to get beat and look bad on film. But I would say more so you want to get the plays in, you want to know where you have to be, you know, whether it's a plus protection, you have a squeeze on that, and you have to come in and block a guy or you're a man on the defensive end. So, you know, for the young guys especially, it's more of getting a grip of this offense because, you know, it's, it's a big offense, there's a lot of plays, and, you know, there's a lot of moving parts and you have to know what you're doing. And just making sure your eyes are in the right place, your feet are in the right place. Not so much, you know, hitting each other, but more so just being in the right place, essentially. You, know, you talk about kind of the, the depth of this offense, right, and how mm-hmm. vast it is. And we've heard that from a lot of people. But, you know, specifically speaking about some of those younger guys, right? Like, when you, you know, way back when, when you were that rookie trying to figure things out, like, what do you think the biggest challenges for some of these young guys coming in and trying to learn and excel in this offense? I would say the speed of the game. Mm-hmm. I think that. The jump from college to the NFL is a huge jump in speed. And, you know, with the young guys like Dalton and Curtis, I'm telling them, you know, it's going to take you a little bit to get just to the speed. I mean, shoot, it took me six years to truly get a grasp of the game in the NFL, you know, the game of football. So, you know, the speed of the game is one big thing. And then also just learning how to be a pro. You have to – it takes a little bit. You have to, you know, be willing to wake up early, leave late, look after your body, eat the right foods, study more than you have in the past, you know. So it takes a lot to be a pro and stick around and just be a guy that the team can depend on. You know, is is there part of it, too, where you kind of have to learn, you know, I don't want to – fail seems like too big of a word, but you have to learn how to get beat, right? Because to your point, you said the speed of the game is so much different, right? Like no linemen, even the guys in the Hall of Fame aren't go- shooting 100% all the time. So, like, when you're a young guy, you're coming in, you're trying to figure out how to adjust to this. Like, do you have to not be okay with, with getting beat but learning how to take that and use it as a positive? Yeah, I mean, I would say you're going to get beat. That's the NFL, like – Last week, we got to meet with a couple of the legends of the game, and I got to sit down with Art Show and just talk to him. And I was like, how did you handle getting beat? And he was like, everyone gets beat. It doesn't matter how good you are. You're going to get beat once or twice. You have to, you know, when you do get beat, you have to learn how to come back from that and be even better the next rep and make sure it doesn't happen again. And, you know, me, I get to go up against Max every single day, and he's all pro, and I'm trying to reach that level too. So, you know, we go back and forth, but we get each other better, and you have to learn how to, when, once you get beat, recover from that and not get beat again you know with me and him you know maybe he beat more than move where I beat him and I stop a move then he come back the next day with a new move and then he get me with that move and then I have to adjust and then try to stop that move then he bring another move like you know so it's just building off repetitions where you can learn a lot you can learn a lot from every single rep it doesn't matter if you get beat or if you don't um it's the NFL everyone's great that's why they're here, and you just have to learn on the fly with that. You know, I imagine for all you guys, too, or I should say the ones of you guys that came back, right, from 2023, year two in this system, I imagine that you just have a better grasp, a better idea of what, what coach wants, of how it's supposed to look and how it's supposed to feel. I mean, what is the benefit of not having to go through and learn a completely new system again this year? I would say that it's more so now we can focus on technique. There's still little necks and necks that we have to – learn within the offense, but you can learn more now. You know, last year was more so learning where to be, who to block. This year is more so now I know who I'm blocking. How can I block them more efficiently? How can I 
dominate them more? How can we move someone from point A to point B and make it easier for Josh to run through? How can we dominate someone in the in, you know in the passing game and open up lanes where if Jimmy needs to escape, then he can escape, or so vice versa. You know, if just giving Jimmy time in the pocket, but learning how to really dominate a guy. You know, last year was more so just getting here and getting the ball out. This year it's more so getting here, dominating here, and then next play doing the same thing, you know, building off that. So, you know, it's nice that we're returning all the starters so we can build even more continuity and chemistry. And, you know, me and Bars, we're on the same page. He knows how I like to play and I know how he likes to play. You know, I play, I don't play like a lot of attacks in the league. Like I like, I have my own thing and having Bars say he knows what I like to do. So then that helps him know what he has to do also, you know. Yeah, continuity, the name of the game, really in football, but especially for you big fellows up front, right? We hear all the time it's five guys moving as one. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's probably hard to overstate just how important that, that continuity is with each other. But we've gotten all the important stuff out of the way, right? We've talked football, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to have you here for a lot of reasons. But one, as one of our more vocal uh, soccer fan supporters on the roster, dude, colossal news yesterday, right? Messi's coming stateside. Messi's yeah, going to Miami. Wild. I mean, what was your first reaction when you hear that? Because I, I was... Like, I'm a big soccer guy. I was really excited, but mm -hmm. I'll be super honest with you. I was really, really surprised. I think that with Messi, he's done everything you could possibly want to do in his career. He's won multiple Champions Leagues. He's won La Liga. He's won the Ballon d'Or. Like, he's done everything you want to do. He's a multiple-time champion. He's the best of the best. I think Ronaldo's better, but that's, you know, that's up for debate. But he's done everything, so what's next? It's moving on to the next chapter, and... That goes into ownership. That goes into building, you know, your name, your brand. And him coming to the states is no better place to do that because, like, you know, the states are the that's the best place to do that. So, I think with him coming to the states, it's gonna build the MLS one. It's gonna build his brand too, and more people are gonna want to watch the team. I was looking at this one stat that said David Beckham. I, I don't know what year it was, but when he purchased into Miami, it was worth twenty five million. Now it's worth six hundred and fifty million. That's good ROI, baby. And then with Messi coming in, they're saying their valuation is going to go over a billion. And so with Messi, he has shares of the team also, and that's why he came over here. So he's getting shares of into Miami, but then also they're setting him up to own a, like a team later down the line. So I think it's more so a move for his future. And he's done everything he's done. He's wanted to in the game, so why not have fun now? Yeah, and, and totally, and you, you hit the nail on the head. And I think like another important part of it, too, for me, is when you look at Messi coming, right, and, and the fact that it's going to be so good for MLS and mm -hmm. be so good for soccer. But really, I, I think, like, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, because there's so many kids now. And you, you see all the stats about how many kids play youth soccer, mm -hmm. but there's that big drop-off around middle school when they want to do football, basketball, baseball, whatever it is. But if you have the chance when you're a little kid to go out and see Messi, right, a guy who literally won the World Cup six months ago, mm -hmm. who's still maybe not at the peak of his powers, but, but pretty close, like I, I'm really excited to see what like that next generation looks like, like the Messi effect, like I said, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Yeah, I think the one thing with Americans is – you know, when you think of soccer, you think of the Premier League, you mm -hmm. think of La Liga, you think of, you know, Liga One, you think for all these different leagues around the world, the MLS truly isn't a big name. You know, it's like there's a big five and the MLS is kind of on the outside looking in. Yeah. And so now with Messi coming over, more people are going to pay more attention to the MLS. So then kids are going to want to play soccer because they see Messi. I think that soccer is a growing sport in America. I think, I don't know if it will be as big as football, but it's definitely going to be. You know, it's, it's definitely going to grow with him coming over here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it'll ever be as big as the NFL during our lifetime, but, you know, 100 years from now, 200 years, you never know. But mm -hmm. uh, speaking of it, the growth of the game and, and how many people are watching soccer and, and digesting soccer in one shape or, way, shape, or form, I know you're an Arsenal guy, but mm -hmm. we got Man United, Dortmund coming into town. Shameless plug, go get your tickets at Allegiant Stadium. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it, it's really fun and exciting for me that during the summer we are here right in our own backyard having some of these big dog clubs, these national, international brands come and showcase their thing just down the street at Allegiant. No, it's definitely exciting. Um, I actually haven't had the honor of going to an Arsenal game yet. I haven't been to a soccer game in a long time. So I'm definitely excited to see Manchester United. My little brother is actually a fan of Man United. So, and I'm definitely going to go to the game because I just love the sport yeah. in general. You know, I'm a huge Arsenal fan. Don't like Manchester United at all, but... I'm a fan of the game, so I would love to go see that game. So how does that work where Jermaine's an Arsenal fan, L Little Brother's a Man United fan? Like, I imagine those group texts, those family chats, got to be a little testy oh, from game day. Oh, it's funny because I'm an Arsenal fan. My little brother's a Man United fan. 
My dad's a Liverpool fan. My mother's a Tottenham <laughs> fan. So, you know. So you guys got the entire Premier League yeah, on lock, man. We definitely um, <laughs> talk smack to each other when we're playing um, each other's team. So it's a fun little thing we have going. Absolutely. Well, hey, man, before we get you out of here, we've talked a lot about a lot of stuff. But a little birdie told me that we need to give the big fellas some love on social media, I right? Mean, you know, we need to do be, it. So give, nice, me, give me a did, plea. We're in it's, the trenches doing all the work. So, you know, Tay can look good and Jimmy can look good this year and Josh can look good. You know, so Daniel can make his kicks and AJ can look great holding the ball for him. You know, it's just just a little bit of love would be good, you know? A little bit of love for the big guys. A little bit. Now, a, we're not asking for much, I'm right? I'm not asking for much. You know, I just, <laughs> you know, I'm, we're never going to be like the Tay – or the Jimmy level when it comes to, you know, pitchers and everything. But, you know, we can be, you know, I think the linemen look good. You know, we're wearing helmets and everything, so you don't really see it. But we're a good-looking group, like, group of guys, you know. So, Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I believe in you 100%. This is, we are starting the movement today. Getting the, getting the offensive linemen, getting a little shine on Instagram, giving a little saying, sign on you know, social. Linemen it starts today. You know, no team really goes out of their way to show the linemen, unless it's like Trent Williams or something like that. But even then, you know, the 49s are – Showing all the other players, you know, I feel like linemen need love. Oh, there was one thing. What was it? Um, the little rookie showcase that they did. Mm. Not one lineman was selected to do that. Wow, the NFL one. Yeah, that little. Yeah, the one in. Um, yeah, LA. in LA. Yeah. Yeah. No, one lineman was selected, and I don't think a lineman has been selected in a while. So I'm like, you know, I don't know what people have against linemen, but. Hey, so, I love linemen, man. I love them. I mean, I love them too. You guys are, I mean, like we talk about, the unsung heroes of everything, the engine of the car, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone likes to see the flashy, you know, the paint and the sound system and look at the rims on the tires, but you ain't doing anything without that, without that engine. That's what I'm saying. You're not doing anything. You have to see what's under the hood. Absolutely. And it starts today. This Today, as we record this on June 8th, Jermaine, our mission, our goal. I'm just saying. More love for the linemen. I mean, if you show linemen more love, you know, probably get more fans in the game, you know. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Linemen make everything run. It's like, you know, you can't drive a car without wheels. The wheels are the linemen. Spitting facts. Just saying. Spitting facts. Jermaine Illuminar. Well, hey, man, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Appreciate I know that mandatory minicamp is a busy time for you guys. Uh, best of luck, and we'll catch up during training camp. All right, brother? Appreciate that.